Hello, welcome to Fort Fritz, your one stop for news, current events, and all forms of entertainment relating to the paranormal, the supernatural, the Fortean, and things that go <gasps> bump in the night, all packaged and presented in the form of Know Nothing Know It Alls, entertaining the unknown. I am your host, Fritz, joined as always by co host, Man Daddy. Hi. Kaz. Hey. Angela. Hello. And our very special guest tonight is Daniel. How are you, Dan? Hi. <laughs> I'm good. Dan. Thanks for That's having good. me. Look at Hello, him. Dan. Dan's a uh, well. You know, Dan's been helping us out behind the scenes for a long time now. Friend and, of the uh, show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. More, more on that later. But uh, I have something very, very shocking to share with you. <gasps> what? This might rattle your very core. Some people don't believe in ghosts. What? Oh well, yeah. Hmm. Right. Yeah, Fools. Well. Out of a hundred people, what do you think the percentage of people who actually believe in ghosts would be, or spirits? Dan, go ahead. Uh, thirty-five percent. Thirty-five percent. That's pretty confident. I'm going to say forty-five percent. Forty-five percent. Pretty confident. Seventy-six. Seventy-six is damn near a hundred percent. Not into math, I see. Uh, I'm going to go sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. Kaz is pretty much on the money. It's seventy-five percent. Three out of Boom. four people. Shaka-laka right there. Three out of four people believe in uh, spirits. All right. This really fascinating 2014 BBC article came out called Psychology, the Truth About the Paranormal. They bring up a lot of really good uh, examples of uh, damage to the right hemisphere that might be responsible for visual processing. They also go into, well, the dang old world is just too spooky. So we kind of think of something that can take its place kind of to trick our mind, our highly evolved human mind, of course, into believing that there might be something out there after death. We don't know. It's more of a hope in a lot of ways, you know. <laughs> I mean, this can't be it. Depends. Uh, the author of Psychology, The Truth About the Paranormal, is David Robson. I contacted him. I said, David, call the show. Let's talk about this a little bit more in detail. But I don't care about science. I care about entertainment. Because you know what? Every time I see Patrick Wilson, I think, he looks just like Will Arnett. Does he know? He kind of does. I can see that. And if you don't know who Patrick Wilson is, I was ask. he was in all of the Conjuring movies. He portrayed Ed Warren. He oh, okay. Re okay. He reprised the role of Ed Warren uh, in Conjuring 3. And um, he played Raul in um, Phantom of the Opera, the movie. And also Ooh. Angels in America. He was yes. In. And he was in an episode of Girls. Really? Wow. Are you Where a, a super fan handsome? or what? Is this Down with I the man. I think he's very talented. Evidently, I, th I think he's very yeah. He's he's super 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 talented. So anyway, I get my like Conjuring Will movies Arnett? mixed up. Which yeah, the Conjuring and the Sinister and the Annabelle and the they all, I get, they got all kind of mixed yeah. up. In, and Insidious, Insidious is really good. Insidious they are. Is yeah, a good one. yeah, the it's good. Patrick Wilson, um, while filming the original Conjuring movie, he was asked by the uh, the Independent, which is a UK paper. If he had any kind of uh, uh, unexplainable paranormal experiences, because, again, he portrays Ed Warren, husband uh, to the uh, recently deceased uh, Lorraine oh, Warren. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Just like two weeks ago or so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe she was in her 90s. So he said, actually, you know what? Yeah. While recording the original Conjuring movie, the actress who portrayed the young girl who like visually starts presenting with bruises said that she actually started to present with bruises on set. She would have bruises that would just show up. Really? And, oh. and he said, I didn't want to talk about that during the pressers and uh, interviews because it wasn't my story to tell. But every time I would talk to her or her parents, they would give me that wide-eyed, I don't know. I have, I have no idea. So thinking about whether or not ghosts can come from a place that is originated from the brain or not, you know, whether or not we believe or if we have damage to the right or left So hemispheres. we're kind of creating them, what you're saying? Well, I have something that uh, you definitely cannot explain away. Okay. This is video from a metro station after hours, and this is in Zaragoza metro station in the city of Monterrey in the northeastern Mexico Mexican state of Nuevo Leon. This was filmed by a witness who was, well, also trying to help. The video starts off with the witness saying, I can hear a small boy calling out for his child. The metro is closed. So this metro worker decided to go search for the child with me. And this is the audio. 
If you would also like to help search for this ghost child, just go to realradio.fm, click shows, blogs, and podcasts, click Fort Fritz, and uh, here we go. The person who is filming is walking with the worker up the escalator now. You hear Papa. To me, this is the craziest thing. When they're right in the middle of the stairs, you hear it almost right behind you. Right here. That's the loudest Ooh, one that you hear. Loud. And then they get to the top of the stairs. The metro worker calls out for the kid. The metro had already been closed. Dundas? It's the, it's the exact same sound. When on that second floor. It's chilling. It's really, really what? scary. What? This uh, came out just... And the same sound as they're walking all all around this metro station. So it, it, it's not just a kid looking for his papa somewhere? This is a spirit? This was a closed metro. Metro had been closed for a long time and no kid was heard of or... Seen, seen from. I think maybe there's just a missing kid that no one knows about. Yeah, it, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big skeptic, so I'm with you. I'm, yeah, like, I'm pretty like... sure that's probably just a lost kid. Like, that's... He's not dead yet. That's interesting. Dan and Man Daddy, <laughs> Kaz, Angela, thoughts on this? And uh, I'm going to play it one more time. It's uh, kind of creeping me out. It's like a that. ringtone yeah. from hell. It did <laughs> seem like uh, the quality of the the sound didn't change based on where he was. They went from like the bottom of the stairs to the middle, the it top, the and around the corner, and it sounded like almost like it was coming from a PA or something. I don't know, like to be that like projected loud. in yeah, the same I mean, way. That it is weird. Loud. But you look at the surfaces, you look at at the actual room that they're in. It's all tile and big bouncy walls. Very, you can hear the reverb. Super echoey. Yeah. So yeah, you're true. You don't hear it localized anywhere, but at the same time, would you? Yeah, probably not. People took to social media to say, um, you know, that that station always, quote, gave me the willies. The hallways are too long and empty. Uh, another person added, how scary. My God, have mercy on his soul. Ooh. And yeah. then someone else said, it is just his son waiting for him upstairs. So I don't know if that means like he's dead or <laughs> She's like, dead, dead. Stop walking around <laughs> the empty metro. Come back. Take me home. Yeah, exactly. I'm done with, I won't, I'm I'm done with Metro. Exactly. I won't say it's not creepy. It's definitely a creepy video. Very haunting sound. It is. Yeah, super let's, haunting. Let's Gave me the chills. I will say that. Or the willies, per se. Is per se. Yes. Let's listen to it one more time, shall we? Um, just to give everyone the willies. Yep. Yep. Just in case you're, in, just just you're willy free. I that ride. need more willies. Have some willies out there. There it is. It sounds far away there, right? As the video starts. Uh -huh. And again, go to realradio.fm. Click blogs and shows Fort Fritz and see this really chilling video. It sounds loud right there. And they're traversing stairs. So it would at least, the Doppler effect would, right? It's loud as right there when yeah. they're halfway through the stairs. Yeah. The way the guy is just nonchalantly walking while this ghost is shrieking out around him is pretty freaky to me. Well, what would you do, man, Daddy? I'd be looking around and, you know, yeah. having some sort of reaction. Well, this he's, guy's like... He's filming forward, but we don't know what his head is doing. He could be like... No, the guy that was in front of him that oh. we just saw. Well, that's a hardened metro yeah, worker. That's a metro it, 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 it's all day. It's a metro security worker yeah. in, a, in a city in Mexico. Like, yep. That's He's not Mexico all, City. Maybe. It's crazy there, I'm sure. I leave you uh, with one more bit of ghostly news. Nope. So again, real, realradio.fm, just click shows and blogs and uh, click that one. That's a, well, it's a spooky Casper ghost who calls for dad in Tube Station. You That's what independent.com, yeah. You ever notice that uh, Casper the Ghost and Richie Rich have the same body yeah, shape? Yeah, why is that? Yeah. So Casper is dead Richie. Correct. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, just because when you die, you turn into a bald ghost. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but you're friendly. <laughs> you didn't see the Richie Rich movie? It established the Richie Rich cinematic universe. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> so a rich is, tapestry. Is yeah. a part of that, I guess? Yeah, like, Sam of course. Samuel L. Jackson uh, shows up at the end of Richie Rich and says, <laughs> oh I'd God. like to talk to you about the Jughead Gang initiative. <laughs> 
So who um, who here has seen the pretty much recently released, I think Net- Netflix, if I'm wrong, uh, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile about uh, Ted Bundy? Netflix. Not. Oh, I've seen You it. have seen it? Lily Collins uh, plays Ted Bundy's uh, girlfriend. She recently gave an interview with TheGuardian.com. She thinks she was visited by ghosts of Ted Bundy's victims Ooh. while she was preparing for this role. Oh, man. Like, how? She said she kept waking up at 3.05 a.m. every night. Waking at the witching hour. Yep. yep. She would, uh, this was over the Christmas holidays. In what holidays. time zone? Uh, I don't know. But this was the Christmas holidays. By the way, Lily Collins, who do you think she's uh, related to? Phil. Yes. Phil Boom. Collins' is people. Nice. Phil Collins. Lily Collins is, I guess, his daughter. Yep. Who cares? You well, never know. He divorced his wife by fax. So, so let's go Are back to this. Are you serious? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Well, preparing for this role, uh, Lily Collins over the Christmas holidays said that she would wake up every night at 3.05 a.m. Quote, I would go downstairs and have a cup of tea trying to figure out why I had woken up again. Then she says, I started being woken up by flashes of images like the aftermath of a struggle. She then went on the Internet to, uh, you know, do some sleuthing and discovered that 3 a.m. is the time when the veil between the realms. What, man, daddy? It's the witching hour. It's the thinnest. It's the witching hour. It's when, when they come through, the demons through. come on through. She swears to God she was visited by the victims of Ted Bundy. Damn. How did they know? Did they get? Did they have email or something? They have an email chain to let everybody know when the movie's coming up or something? I don't know. Do you, do you think that's something that can happen? Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't it? I mean, these are souls that are angry souls, you'd think, you know, when you uh, get exited from this realm in such a violent and vile way. You're just, I guess you'd be worried about it being glorified, yeah. you know, because, I mean, it's, it, we really do kind of glorify serial killers at this time. And, you know, and I'm just as guilty. I love the movies. I love the books. I've read so many books and, you know, written songs about them and whatnot. It is just sort of a bizarre fascination we have with serial killers in this society. Mm-hmm. And so I, I could see as a ghost being like, well, we got to we got to get our words in here. We got to let you know, someone know our our side of the story. I definitely think if you're tapping into those energies, they kind of like to tap back a little bit. Yeah. Ooh, nice. nice. That's scary. I don't Tapping like that. energies. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Just, yeah, no, I don't like that. Don't tap me, I'll tap you back. <laughs> Ugh, that's scary. Tap me and I'll tap you back. Kaz, do you think people can be haunted or visited by the ghosts of people for a biopic? So to play devil's advocate, I think that like being involved in in a production where you're dealing with these images and these ideas of these people, it could just start to seep into you know the schema of your dreams and give you kind of a background of like you might be seeing these sure, things when sure. you're kind of in that suggestible conscious yeah. exactly it's like um, the power of suggestion. But I think more interesting to me is, and I tried to bring it up. Uh, what what time zone is the witching hour in? Because three a.m. in the Pacific time is not. It's, is, it's is to it, you, yourself, where so, you're experiencing. So where you are, so it rolls. Rolling, witching the witching hour, hour just rolls yeah. across. So okay. if you drove the right way, you could just be you just be hitting the witching hour yeah. like constantly. Oh, <laughs> there you go. You're flying. We're just gonna you're just stay. Like flying in the witching hour. So excited just about that. Just blew the like, mic open, man. Oh my god, we're gonna we're gonna make billions of dollars. I want this just slowly driving with the witching hour to time it out just right. Coming up, we have a a whole bunch of hoot nannies and Easter eggs for you. By the way. We have entertainment news with Kaz, Man Daddy, and Angela. Kaz is going to be talking about Sunken City, and that's a video game. Correct. And Man Daddy is going to be talking about Dead to Me. Is that a movie? It's a series on Netflix. Angela has uh, got some Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy fun. Ted Bundy. Yeah. <laughs> Ted Bundy. <laughs> it's Ted Bundy time. Now it it's is. Ted yeah. Bundy time. Now it's Ted Bundy. Um, Happy hour. During the break, we're going to be listening to Phil Collins. You're listening to Four Fritz. That crossover. Right here on Real Radio. One of four. Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Jakey Lee, what up? Hey, I saw this tour in uh, at the Orange County Civic Center. That's really good on these headphones. It does. You guys, you guys want to sit around listening to Black Sabbath instead of? You guys want to sit around listening to Ozzy on Fort Fritz? <laughs> Hello, yeah. I'm your host. Is it Ozzy or Sabbath? That's Ozzy. Uh, That's yeah. just straight That's Ozzy Osbourne. All right. 
I'm your host, Fritz, joined as always by co-host Man Daddy, Sup? Angela, Hello. Kaz, Howdy. and our very special guest, Dan. How are you, Dan? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Very good. Thank you so much for uh, deciding to spend your night with us this thank, evening. Thank you for having me. It's such a great time when we have Dan over. Right? I it's always Dan. a good time. It's a Dan Dan's night. A good man. Dan too. Dan loves you oh, guys. Everyone loves Dan. Third, third person. It's just warmth. Where have I heard Dan's voice before? Well, uh, look no further than the Chester Charleston commercials. You've heard them tonight because we've been playing them. And also, he's just a damn fine fella. Just if, a general man about, man about town. town. Man yeah. about town. Damn fine Dan. Dan is also on uh, a lot of our uh, previous episodes on Fort Fritz. Just download the iHeartRadio app. It's absolutely free. Open up that smartphone now. Search in your app store iHeartRadio and then search Fort Fritz. F-O-R-T-F-R-I-T-Z. Just like that, right, man, daddy? That's exactly how it goes. Mm -hmm. And you can also follow us on all the social media platforms. Check us out on Facebook, on Twitter. We're uh, Fort Fritz MCT uh, at at Fort Fritz just on Facebook. And just check out. We'll uh, let you know know what we're doing you can let us know what you're doing yeah, sometimes we post cat videos oh i love them it's but, been a while actually. Yeah, yeah, actually. it's been a long time can we give one more cat video up before I'll, i'm gonna do that right now are there actually, actually cat awesome. videos on the internet yeah, yeah, yeah uh, okay, you gotta okay. really search to find yeah. a cat yeah. video they're, they're just, out there you gotta get in the dark web just to find go a cat. to my page <laughs> all the cat videos are there so uh what do you have to discuss with us this week angela well speaking of lily collins lily collins she was in the movie Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. Why is it named that? That is actually what the judge said at the end of uh, Ted Bundy's sentence, oh. his trial. Who was played by John Malkovich in this movie, who was phenomenal. Oh, really? I, didn't know, I didn't know Malkovich was in it. He Malkovich, was great. Malkovich. He sounded just like that judge. He did a phenomenal job. Wow. He really did. He it's did. Malkovich. It's, it's Malkovich. Malkovich. And Malkovich steps up. Yeah. I have to say, the um, even though that is a really powerful statement to make i think it's a terrible name for a movie horrible horrible name for a movie because we've been trying to remember what it's called no one can remember the order and, and i've seen it and i i don't right. i don't remember Shock and wicked violin two out of the wicked. five of you have seen it and still don't know what it's called right Go i ahead. know i've tried to remember i'm like extremely something so Kaz, extremely, extremely and vile. vile yeah no you're wrong what was what it called Kaz? extremely wicked shockingly evil and vile oh Ooh, my god well done all right one more time <sighs> <laughs> Thank you. Point. By the way, they, they don't use the Oxford comma in the title, just so you know. That's true. Ah, Nicely that's done. True. Thank you for that, by the way. You're welcome. Mm, You're welcome. I don't know how I feel about that. It is on Netflix, mm -hmm. and I think they did a great job with the movie. I've heard great reviews. It's great. And Zach Efron was fantastic he in it. He really was. He sounded just like him, too. Um, I have a trailer uh, in case you would like me to play a little bit of it. I would love you to because do that. He, yes. He, sa he sounds so... That's why I was like... He got his cadence, everything. It's perfect. It was really weird. That guy's been staring yeah. at 1969. Yeah. What is it about this guy? When I feel his love... I feel like I'm on top of the world. Yeah, well, he looks like Zach Efron. bad so. guy. <laughs> you don't know. Right there. I think I must be lost. That will shock you beyond your worst nightmare. He sounds just like him. Inspired. I am innocent. You don't actually believe this garbage, do you? It's in all the papers, Ted. Isn't that weird? Oh, monkey! Oh. It's weird. How did his name get on that suspect list? Ooh, the, the story crowbar. behind this trailer is so good. I want to come see you. <laughs> but the title is so horrible. It's awful. Yeah. It's Great bad. movie, bad branding. It's a cl bad clunky branding. title. So yeah, so, like really good. I mean, what do you think? Does he sound like him or not? A lot. He, he sounds like him. He, he lo looks like he him. He looks like him. Yeah. He acts like him. Because I did watch um, the Ted Bundy tapes on Netflix, and that We're was captivating. like an eight to ten episode. I can't remember the length of it, a lot. but. <laughs> Um, lots of footage, especially of the trial. Mm -hmm. um, that guy was crazy. Yeah, he was. He, I mean, he was all over the place. He was a psychopath. Um, absolutely. I mean, he killed like to, like to a T. He was like the exact perfect example of what a psychopath is. Yep, able to live in that world and interact in our world. You know, mm -hmm. living in a completely different world, but able to interact in our world fine. Well, yep. that's the thing is that so this movie is actually based on the book written by his longtime girlfriend. Oh, so she wrote this. Oh, okay, yes. neat. Um, her name is Elizabeth Kendall. She goes by Liz. Her book's called The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ted Bundy. And that's what this whole movie is based on. Because oh. it, it really does, it focuses on Ted Bundy a lot, but it really focuses on her. Hmm. Um, and her whole reaction, because she was actually the one who called the Seattle police to give <gasps> the name. 
Oh. That's right. And it shows really her reaction because they had a whole life together. They, she had a daughter, not through him. Um, they were together for years, and they had a whole... She loved him. She, I mean, they they had a whole relationship. They They were connected. She really really fell in love with this person and then found out he did all these horrible things. 30 known. They don't even know if there's more, but 30 known people there that he murdered. There, there has, has to be a huge amount of people because there there's so many be. famous serial killers that are in the teens. I don't even know that I you know? know 30 people. And it's it's all Thank over you. different states too. California, Colorado, Florida, Idaho, Oregon, Utah, and Washington State. Oh, that's what makes it so difficult. Serial killers is they love to travel. You know, you, right. can't, you can't really stay in one place for too long. Also, right. um, Wanderlust. There's there are so many different serial killers too that have like known deaths six like under ten right. but possibly hundreds. Yeah, they'll love to admit to more once they're caught. Once they're caught, they will admit to anything because it gets them to go on field trips. And he has thirty over a span of years. And he actually, um, because he's been in different states and he was super charismatic and he could totally just be this chameleon that would morph into different people. Um, other names you would know him by would be Chris Hagen, Kenneth Meisner, Officer Roseland, Richard Burton, Rolf Miller. Like, he <laughs> Good just, fake names. Yeah. Right? Um, right? It's probably the wa- Rolf. Rolf. No, no, Rolf. Rolf Miller. That's, yeah, it's like, there's no way you made that up. Solid. <laughs> did, you, solid. did you know his body was cremated in Gainesville? Yeah, oh, yeah. and spread across. And spread across the uh, the Cascade Range in Washington. Where he also murdered people. Yeah. And bodies have been probably decomposing since then. What a nice tribute. And he's still haunting those poor people with his, like, ashes. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. You get a little tickle in your throat, you're in the Cascades, like, ah, it really, it really ah, damn is. you, Ted Bundy. It really is crazy. <laughs> And um, he did get caught in Florida, and Florida loved that. They were like, yeah, we got him. We got this guy. And it was this whole big dramatic trial. He had fired his lawyer. He did his own thing. I have to say, though, while I was watching the movie, and I thought Zac Efron did a great job, I was like, that is a very, very dramatic bow tie that they have on Zac Efron. And what do you mean? It was that just sounds like a ska band, dramatic, dramatic bow tie. Bow tie. So, out of all the the footage I've watched of Ted Bundy, I'm watching it and I'm like, that that bow tie. I don't remember Ted Bundy actually having such a prominent bow tie like that. <laughs> so, can I maybe look up like side by side images? I did. So now I have in my <laughs> I now have in my search history Ted Bundy bow tie. Nice. <laughs> Even and better, Scott Van. Even better. Even better. <laughs> Even better, it really is. I, and I the sit internet corrected. Definitely delivered, and I just something just popped up with Killer Ted with a killer bow tie. Oh, oh my god! That's a pretty. It's it's definitely dramatic. I will say that, and we can put this up on a uh, on Real Radio dot FM on the Fort Fritz. Just look up Ted uh, Bundy bow tie. Ted, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy bow tie. Dramatic bow tie. Um, I'm and, posting it right now, and I'm right. It. I mean, Ted Bundy's bow tie was dramatic. It's re- it's flamboyant. It is, it's but the one than, that's it's bigger that, than his head. It's huge. No. It's like a clown bow tie. <laughs> it's very dramatic. It's a it's a pretty big. Damn! Bow tie. Look at that bow tie. I would put it on the large scale. I don't think it's yeah, like it's, a big it's bow not tie. clownish. It's a big, it's no, a, it's not clownish, but not it's clownish, large. But that's pretty big. But pretty was, prominent. Uh, I mean, was that like you know seventies right? In vogue for the time, yeah. 70s sure, I'm had not all judging. Kinds of weird... I'm not judging. Oh, the bow I can't tie. Can I? When you meet someone with a bow tie in normal life, you always have to kind of go really. You know, yeah. a nice event or something like that, okay, but when, just in normal life when someone's wearing a bow tie. Bow ties like, are for staff and children, otherwise you're an old <laughs> eye doctor. Oh, damn. I had an eye doctor that definitely wore a bow tie, and that was like on all the can. weird like, online reviews about him. was like always mentioning his bow tie. What a weird, I want to draw attention doctors, to my neck. Yeah. What a weird thing. <laughs> doctors and English professors can yeah. always wear bow ties. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I, like I appreciate English that, Dan. Thank you. You got to have a tweed something on, though. Oh, for sure. And those, those uh, elbow patches. Yeah, yeah. And, right, and, let's and get... Bill Nye. And Bill Nye. <laughs> Bill Nye's loud. Yeah. Actually, let's... well, hold on. I have something yeah. to say about Bill Nye and his bow tie, oh, Fred. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let the woman talk. Someone was in the elevator with Bill Nye, and he had like <laughs> two minutes before he had to go on, and they're like, and he didn't have his bow tie tied. And they're like, can you? And he like literally did it in like 10 seconds and One just hand. walked out of the <sighs> elevator, and they're like, oh my God. So it's not a clip on. Confirmed. No. Bill Nye's bow tie. Bill Nye's is... Bill, Nye Bill bow tie. Nye's bow tie <laughs> is legit. Anyway, so Zach Efron, the the bow tie that they have him in, it it's almost on clownish. It's like it is pretty it's big. kind of dramatic. So that's the little side by side that I could pull up. Yeah. But the other frames that we were looking at 
uh, Angela is absolutely correct. It's really just disproportionately large. It's very large. It's a very big bow tie. Maybe it's one of the ones that goes... It spins Almost around. Bigger Look than a Pee Wee Herman. I feel like, Ted, like that is a very big bow tie. Yeah, that's strangely big. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's being attacked by Mothra. Yeah. so much. You heard it here, folks. So, I mean, I get it. It's like a dramatization of everything that happened, but come on. It is. It's a bit much. Extremely it wicked, is. strangely large, bow shockingly tie. large Shock- bow tie. Large. <laughs> bow extremely wicked, shockingly large bow tie. And vile. Um, Haley Joel Osment's also in this movie. No way! I yes. was just talking about where did Haley Joel Osment yeah. go? He's been, in, he's been he... in Silicon Valley for the last few seasons. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. where he's been. Talking about? Holy crap, that was him, wasn't he? Does he look weird? <laughs> I didn't he? realize that was him! Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Like the totally guy. Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, it is. Great, I love that show so much. Yeah, oh for sure. Oh my god, it's I gotta a great look show, up, yeah. Haley Joel Osment is an adult, that's scary. He, yeah, he's I weird mean, looking. He's got like a little cute face still. He, like, his, his face is like that, man. Yeah, his size, face is that big, but his, but his body head is giant. It. It's very strange. He's got a giant like head. Like a dude yeah. from Little Bits? Giant, giant, yeah. Little yeah. Sorry, son. As you grow old, your face ain't ever gonna change. You're gonna have a little tiny face and a big old man body. He Don't has... scare me, Gypsy! <laughs> <laughs> Um, he plays the boyfriend of uh, Liz Kendall. So when mm-hmm. when Liz is like, who is um, Ted Bundy's girlfriend who wrote the book, and she's the one who called in his name. Again, L- uh, Lily Collins mm-hmm. portrays her, but in the movie she's Elizabeth Klopfer because I guess she's married since then. Right. the The book's still under Elizabeth Kendall. So yeah, I would I would imagine Liz, Liz. of course, Liz Kendall. Um. And it, this whole thing really affects her big time that they're watching because that's it's based on the book that she wrote. I mean, it really messed her up. She took like a whole week off from work. She's just like in a bathrobe watching all like the trial. And she kind of has that weird thing that some people do when they've been manipulated by someone like that. Like, I should have called it in. Why did I do all this stuff? Like and Haley Joel Osment, who's kind of like the nice guy, comes over and befriends her and maybe she married him. He was like, you did a good thing. So many more people could have died if you hadn't called this in. But she felt this enormous guilt from doing it. She, it kind of made her sick. She was obsessed with it. There was one great scene, too, where, like, uh, as I mentioned on segment one uh, just a couple minutes ago, you, she gets that knock on the door and she's presented with something. It's like it's almost like Pandora's box. Not to go back to the sexist Greek, you know, myth story, but... <laughs> There is a very fascinating, uh, I have to stop saying the word fascinating, fascinating scene <laughs> <laughs> at the end. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I don't good. even want to give that away because it, it's that, so good. That's, Please don't. that's one of the best parts, but it's so um, good. it is really great. Um, is that when he gets the soul stone? Yes, actually, it is. <laughs> well, yes. So many soul stones. Um, Jim Parsons is also in this. Really? Um, Big Bang Theory. He plays um, the prosecutor, Larry Simpson. And also, James Hetfield is in it. I know that, too. What? James Hetfield is in this. Oh, God. Yeah, you didn't. James Hetfield, the singer of, and lead yeah, guitarist for Metallica. Not... Uh, Wait a minute. Is he no. John Malkovich? <laughs> <laughs> is he John Malkovich Star- as the judge? <laughs> James Hetfield yeah. as John Malkovich as, as the, the judge. judge. <laughs> 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 and James Par- uh, Jim Parsons does a great job in this. It's a He's prosecutor. Because that, yeah, that prosecutor was kind of a little out there as well. I mean, yeah, there's a was. lot of. Big personalities are surrounding this trial. It was phenomenal. And also, um, you know, Ted Bundy did marry someone while in prison. Carol Ann. No, well, while giving, like, on behalf of uh, himself, yes. acting as his own lawyer. During the trial, During trial. She's, on, she's on the stand uh, as a witness, and he's like, he basically proposes to her. And then because they're in court, he basically just gets them married right then and there. Absolutely. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Words it's it's crazy. crazy. I don't as even As the know. judge, I throw it out. I'm, if I'm Malkovich, I'm like, nah. That's almost an automatic mistrial, We're too. We're not doing this, dude. You're not taking over my court like that. Angela, one more time, uh, in case anyone out there listening on their drive home from work or to work... How can people watch this Ted Bundy documentary starring Zach Efron, John Malkovich, Lily Collins, Jim, Kurt, James Hetfield, Jim, James, Parsons. James Hetfield, Jim Parsons? Yeah, it is on Netflix, and it is called, and you will never remember this: extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile. That's amazing. So coming up, Cass, you're going to be jumping into the Sinking City playable trailer, or uh, trailer that just recently came out. Correct. The game is not out, though, right? Correct. It looks really cool, right? Correct. 
<laughs> Pain Daddy, you are going to be talking about Dead to Me. It's a series, a series on Netflix. And not a movie. Nope, not at all. And Dan, what was the name of that Ted Bundy documentary? Correct. Extremely vile and incredibly close. You're, yep, you got it. <laughs> nice. Nailed it. That's the worst title I've ever heard in my life. Bad branding. Bad branding. You're listening to Fort Fritz right here on Real Radio 104.1. And that's good branding. Alliteration, right? That's right there. Support Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. It's a solid groove, though. Yeah, no, for sure. Basis is just like... It is a solid He's laying it down. She did some great stuff with Peter Gabriel. You're listening to Fort Fritz right here on Real Radio 104.1. I'm your host, Fritz, joined as always by uh, Mandetti. Howdy. Angela. Hello. We got Kazzy. Hey. And we also have our very, very dear friend... Dan. Dan, thank Yay. you so much Dan, for taking so much of your time on Earth I, and I, just throwing I, it into the garbage can. I just enjoy being with you lovely people. Aww. 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 I love That's you so, so much. Nice. Dan, uh, uh, Dan is actually <coughs> helping Angela with the Fringe Festival. Yes. I am as well, and we had a little... Uh, tech gents. Yeah, we had a oh, tech gents That's my name for today. them. I call them I tech it. gents. I love it. Oh, do you? I wasn't sure. No one's commented, and I feel like I'm offending someone. No, I just don't respond well on, <laughs> you don't. You on never social do. media or anything. You don't. It's fine. I love it, though. Man, Daddy, sometimes we uh, find ourselves up against a wall. Yes. Uh, do you play more video games or not enough? It's never enough, really. Is really, it, you right. know. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, some, sometimes you'll have that night or that day where you just have just enough. You're like, that was a good video game session, but nothing's mm-hmm. worse than when you just it's getting too late and you just broke into a new level and you're like, I need to go to sleep, but oh, this is so cool. Mm-hmm. So that, <laughs> that's that's the uh, that's the rub right there. Yep, I've that's had, the rub. I've had many nights. <laughs> you just get in a raid with. You just Five other people. And I'll, I've, I've done I've done raids till three in the morning. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Before you know it, there you are. It's like I'm still awake. There's still beer, and this is still happening. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't currently play video games, but I used to do that with Sonic and Tails. <laughs> Sonic and Tails. <laughs> Sonic and Tails. Nice. Nice. My friends and I used to just get like very specific. Stay up so late and try to like beat some levels. Nice, get your uh, geek on. Yeah. Sonic and Tails. Yeah, how uh, you would hold down and then you would charge C or one of the different, right? Get your spin I up. I don't remember, so but good. I always liked being Tails. Basically burn it out. had a great yep. noise. It was like... Bling, like and now you got like the whole really Sonic like movie coming out yep. now. That's a big controversy. A nightmare. Yikes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a nightmare. Because you've been... You've been uh, you've been watching trailers for The Sinking City for a while now, I think on previous... Uh, iHeartRadio app episodes, you've been talking about this game. Yeah, we, we reviewed a uh, initial cinematic kind of trailer. It was mostly CG and showed kind of the idea of it. And uh, the like tagline, I guess, is, you know, a, a Cthulhu, uh, Lovecraftian sort of horror-inspired um, third-person video game. Spooky which already. The, the, the only thing I feel like in modern times you need to have to be Lovecraftian is, like, cobblestone streets, yep. and then something with, an, like, an octopus tentacle. Yeah, one tentacle, yeah, cobblestone, and, yeah. and some fog. Lots, lots of rain. Fog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just be in London and <laughs> then have, like, an octopus show up, and then you're already, like, in a London. Well, I mean, not necessarily London. It's more New England. It, oh. Oh, oh, the expert oh, over here. Excuse well, me. Yeah. Oh, Pardon. my. Yes. Pardon. Pardon. Oh, be, yeah, everybody's got that, like, pseudo, like, mid-Atlantic is it, accent. Is it Providence, but... Rhode Island, mostly? Uh, it, oh. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, there's a, a, love, a Lovecraft the comic book out there. I think it's called Providence. Oh, really? really? Yeah. yeah. It's familiar. just really neat. It's The artwork's pretty neat. Nice. That's interesting. They've not been able to make a successful Lovecraft video game right it's because it's it and thank you dan because that gets to the core of what i was going to talk about i guess in that it's those stories are about a, a human trying to reach this kind of like ultimate knowledge or power this like eldritch thing and coming into contact with something that they're not ready to come into contact with right like there's this realm of Madness. at least yeah exactly 
Um, and so, like you said, so far, I think the, the idea of a video game is you're the hero and you have to kind of like conquer and stuff. There hasn't been this kind of like very dry, blunt kind of Lovecraft story that's come out yet. So this looks like it might be, it's very dark. There's a lot of like murdery stuff going on, but, uh, and you're playing, uh, Batman now, right, man, daddy. So like it's, it has that element of those, like you go into detective mode or whatever. Right. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, listening to the commentary on this. We put the detective experience oh, first. Go. Yeah, this, this is like a commentary zero video. Zero hand-holding from the game. There are no straightforward tasks. So, and it looks to be open no world, right? So Ooh, they've got yeah. this kind of like big city oh, escape like where you can kind of move around and go quest. investigate different uh, what to look for. things that are going on. So you get tasked with something initially that kind of clues you in on this larger story. Yeah. And uh, sets you well, down a darker and darker road. Too. Exactly. It looks beautiful. It looks it, it, it yeah. looks really and they add nice. that kind of monstery kind of vibe yeah. to it where he's just interacting with this man who is clearly either a monster or like has radiation um, It also gives me that kind of like Fallout 4 vibe with the Right, so the dialogue uh, options it did seem very yeah, the way he was kind of it yeah, so seems, it's all like dialogue tree based. I'm sure there's like a billion different endings or whatever. Yeah, which is not bad. They haven't talked about uh, at least from what I've seen how they're going to structure it if it's going to be one of those like multiple endings or sort of open ended or or what, but it does look to be open world in this big area kind of investigatory uh game with uh Lovecraftian elements to it and the art style looks very cool. It looks like very very Gen 4. How racist are you in it? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, you look at that guy. You can tell uh, that's yeah. That's so hated when you hear something. It's up to you. It's a role playing game. game. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. The choice Jeez. is yours. Fair point. Fair point. Uh, I mean, I, I loved H.P. Uh, Lovecraft forever, and then when you start fighting about the racist side, you're just like, ah, yeah, God. Was so racist. Oh, yeah, that's pretty gross. That's yeah, pretty bad. I do have a question. Yeah. Are there cats in it? Ooh, I there's there's got to be, most definitely. Right? Something like that. There's, there's got to be, right? gotta be yeah. some cats. There's he loved cats. cats. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, this love is, craft, love cats. This is the Sinking City Detective Gameplay trailer. Just go to realradio.fm and uh, click shows and blogs and you will see it. Uh, it looks really beautiful. Yeah, it's definitely pretty. I would it out. definitely play this. It looks but fun. But if I'm going to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to play this. <laughs> because I'm assuming it probably comes out right around the same time as Borderlands 3. Mm, yeah, that's a and, good point. And uh, as a devout Borderlands fan, I will be all consumed for several... The entire day. Several weeks. The entire day. <laughs> well, like, um, the entire E3's one. E3's coming up, though, right? So yes, it is. Gonna be Which one is? Oh, yeah. E3. I will. That's usually I def- I'm definitely going to watch that, that gameplay trailer, though. I want to see more about it. So, Kaz, um, everyone should be looking up the Sinking City, right? And seeing yep. if their console... We'll probably, uh, as, as more details get released, I imagine that we'll talk about it more. Man Daddy... Dead to Me, that's a series, yes. on Netflix. On Netflix. And it uh, looks pretty good on Rotten Tomatoes. Tell me about it. Oh, really? What type of ratings is it getting right now? Uh, do you want me to tell you? Yeah. I mean, okay. 88%. Oh, that's Whoa. good. Yeah, that's not bad. bad. And this is an American Web television series. Yes, it's a Netflix series. It stars Christina Applegate, who is just that. a national treasure. Just a national I treasure. I love her. Uh, James Marsden and uh, another Will female Bundy. leader. Will Bundy. Will Bundy. Yes. Will Bundy. Ah, and, uh, and the Sonic Kelly movie. Rocks. <laughs> and he's in the Sonic, <laughs> and movie. the Sonic movie. It just keeps on coming. It's a thread each uh, each bit. <laughs> so I'm um, assuming it's about dead people. Uh, well, it, it, uh, Christina Applegate plays a character who tragically lost her husband. Oh, okay. Her husband is dead, and she starts going to a support group for people who are grieving. And there she meets the other main female lead, and they strike up a friendship. I would say avoid the trailer. I think the trailer gives away a little too much. Uh, it gets out of the spoilers of the trailer within the first uh, like two uh, episodes. All right, well, I'm let's check out the through. trailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, um, but it, it's really good because it's doing what I like that a lot of shows are doing now with dealing with dark, serious topics. Yeah, seriously. And then also having just straight out humor and to the point of like goofy humor. The humor is so funny. I mean, there's just like, just like I said, they'll, they'll throw in goofy things you don't expect. Like they're just at a restaurant. It's like, oh, excuse me, is the calamari made out of pig buttholes? Just, <laughs> you know, just for no reason. You get, you get that in a scene. And so I'm really enjoying it. I'm only midway through it, but I'm really looking forward to see where it goes. I think it, I, I'm not sure if it's already gotten picked up for another season or not. And and sometimes you maybe want it to end after the first season. You know, I, I don't know yet. But here's another thing I want to bring up is that what they're doing now, and I love it, half-hour episodes, 10-episode season. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Yes. That's all you need. Yeah. I That's mean, all you need. I loved all the Marvel shows, but 13 episodes, an hour long, no. and those stories didn't need it for the most part. No. Yeah. You, I mean, you should never be watching a series and click on how many episodes left and go, oh, really? 
You know, and that's the worst. You're like, oh, there's still four more to go? Uh, Where are we going to go with this? You know, this... uh, They they got a little heavy. Right. Yeah. Russian doll. Bam, bam, bam. Enjoy it. I I watched it in a day, and I had a whole work day that day. Like, I watched it in the morning, a little bit at night. So, yeah. So, overall, you loved it? Yeah, I loved that. Oh, Russian doll's great. Russian doll's great. And so this is... Dan? Nope. It's a good All one. Right. It's a good nope. one. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Gotta use my microphone voice. That's Dan, by the way. Thank Hi. you. Thank you, Dan, Hi. so much for Dan. Uh, hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> But so uh, I'm really digging it. Uh, I think Netflix is doing some, they're, they're doing some great work and some horrible work, as we talked about with the silence uh, a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. And so if you're into goofy comedy, mm-hmm. the new series, uh, I Think You Should Leave, which is produced by Ooh. The Lonely Island. Each episode is like 17 minutes long. And you, it's just straight, stupid, funny, into your face constantly. So that's a good laugh. Great laugh. Watch. I think you should leave if you're into goofy humor. But what a really good new series that combines dark, dark themes with some really nice humor and some good performances. Dead to You on Netflix with Christina Applegate. Well, Main Daddy, uh, I think it's about that time. Let's uh, check out of Fort Fritz. All right. It is time now for the checkout. Starting off, Fritz, what would you like us to check out? Well... My good old buddy Dan over here, who, uh, thank you so much. For, can, can we get a little round of applause? Dan. Dan. Dan's so Dan. awesome. Dan, thank you for this coming over. This episode is named Dan. Um, <laughs> Dan is uh, easily one of my best friends, and uh, I met him because he moved in next door to me. It's and a beautiful story. Now we're in like five, 15 bands. Yep. And uh, and we still hang out, and we make each other laugh, and we work on music. So I I encourage you, reach out to someone that you haven't talked to in a while this weekend and just say, hey, you want to go bowling? I'll kick your ass right now. If you beat me in bowling, I'll then, buy, then we got to start a band. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all really good bands start. Then we have to start and a band. Angela, what do you have for us to check out? My show at Fringe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? At the Black Venue on Virginia, the 19th, 23rd, and 25th. And I would like to say big thanks again to Fritz and Dan for helping me out make this show look awesome. That's good. Visuals. 100%. You guys are great. No, My so first excited. fringe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likewise. Oh, that is so adorable. Igual. Fringe virgin. <laughs> Igualmente. Cass, what you got? So first of all, did you ever see Pitch Black? Pitch yes. Black, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Pitch Black, fantastic. With Vin, Vin Diesel. Diesel. So Point. good. That's Such a good Vin Diesel movie. Right? Oh, yeah. Even as Never Vin Diesel movies it. goes. It's so good. For the original Dude. Xbox. Okay. Yeah, the did. graphics were <clears throat> sick for the first Sitting Xbox. Sitting at an 89 Metacritic to this day, 8.5 oh on IGN, really? in Chronicles good, of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, you Ooh. have to play as Riddick and escape from Space Prison, and you actually have to escape from the prison. There's not like this, there's an initial kind of storyline, but then <sighs> you have to like figure out how to get out of Space Prison Jeez. in a video game, and it was the coolest thing of all time. And What is it called? Check it out. Chronicles of Riddick, the Escape from Butcher Bay. So what do you got to for us to check out there, Dan? Uh, check out uh, this band, Hellfire. Hell Space Fire. Playing they're, them right now. They're a small band from uh, the uh, from Northern California, like Oakland and San Fernando. Well, the girls are warm. New school thrash. They're really awesome. Oh, really? Yeah, I saw them at the uh, at a festival in California. It was on 420. Nice. Determined from that what you will. <laughs> hey, um, you remembered it, so that must be good. Yeah. I don't get it. Uh, they're, they're, they were one of the openers, so you know, like, they were one of the smaller bands. Like, they were one of the first ones to play, and they just blew me away. Hell, Space, Fire is how you, how you find them on, uh, on music apps. Uh, what I'd like you to check out is, of course, uh, my band Gargamel will be playing at Will's Pub Wait, with the no, group. Wait, no, it's not pronounced Gargamel. It's pronounced... Gargamel! Yeah, yeah, it is an exclamation point. It is an nice. exclamation point. So please check out my band. Gargamel! We'll be playing at Will's Pub with the Groove Nicks. Yeah. So that's on the 24th with the Groove Nicks and them at Will's Pub. Please check that out. I do trivia on first and third Mondays at Orlando Brewing at 7 o'clock. I do trivia on Thursdays at Cheers Altamont and at 7 o'clock. And I do trivia on Tuesdays from 5 to 7 at Lucky's in Vineland. Man, Daddy, kick everybody out of this place. All right, hey, everybody, hey, everybody, hey, wake up, hey, hey, hey wake up. You'd be more get assertive. Out. There wow. you go. Get, get out. There you out go. Out of the place, out of the fort, out of the fort. If you're in your car, if you're in your car, find a safe place to pull over, pull over, turn off the car, start it back up, and then you can be on your way, because it's time for you to get out. This is Fort Fritz. Thanks for listening. This is Fort Fritz. Until next time, pleasant dreams.